England is in chaos. There have been riots in the streets and increasing violence. It's been shocking to me that the mainstream media in America has not been reporting on this. Most Americans have no idea this is going on. Well, we're going to cover it here on Wolves in Finance. If you're an American, pay close attention to what I'm about to show you. If we're not careful, this chaos will be coming to America next. Let me state up front that I have never been to the UK, so my grasp of UK politics is going to be limited. However, I have been closely following what has been happening there, so if there are any viewers from the UK, let me know in the comments down below if you agree with me or you think I get anything wrong. I think it might also be helpful for me to share an American's perspective on what is happening in the UK. Tensions erupted in the UK on July 29th when three children were killed in a knife attack. There were also five other children in critical condition as well as two adults. This was a brutal attack. This person slashed a whole group of children with a knife. It happened at a dance and yoga event at a community center for children ages 6 to 11. Witnesses describe children covered in blood running screaming from the building. So still on the first floor, when I opened the, of our office door, I was confronted by another girl on the floor who, who looked like she had multiple stab wounds and was heavily blood soaked. And this guy in front of me with a, with a knife who, who then came towards me, you know, uh, in a pretty menacing way. Uh, uh, and I thought, he's going to kill me too if I'm not, you know, or um, I, 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 I didn't rationalise or, you know, you don't have time to do a risk assessment. I just put my arm up when this knife was coming towards me and uh, I didn't even realise I'd been stabbed initially until I looked down and saw blood coming out my leg and, and I tried to kick him with my right leg and then that's when I fell over. The yoga instructor, Leanne Lucas, risked her life to protect the children. She went to the hospital in critical condition. Are you able to share with us how Leanne is doing? I believe she's going to be okay. Can I suspect that what she was doing was shielding children? So um, if you want to talk about real heroes, you know, um, then that's her, definitely. Um, the police arrested a 17-year-old boy named Axel Ruda Kubana for the attack. The attack sparked outrage among UK citizens that have been facing growing violence and knife attacks from the immigrant population. The UK media has been claiming that the outrage is misplaced. They claim that the boy is not technically an immigrant himself, so UK citizens should not be rioting against immigrants. To be fair, we don't know a lot of information about this boy's life story. Are his parents immigrants? Was he part of the immigrant community? We don't know for certain. But we also have to be realistic. With a name like Axel Ruda Kubana, it seems like he is somehow involved in the immigrant community. Frustration around immigration issues has been growing for some time. People are tired of the growing crime and the lack of police enforcement. Here are the statistics for violent crime in England and Wales. You can see it has skyrocketed in recent years, with over 2 million violent crimes in fiscal year 2024. That means that roughly 3% of the population has experienced a violent crime within the last 12 months. To put this in perspective, that's roughly 10 times the crime rate in the United States. It's out of control. Let me show you something else. This is the number of rapes in England and Wales you can see it has also skyrocketed. The obvious question is, what is causing this? Here's another statistic. This is the change in net migration in the UK. The dark blue is natural population increases. The light blue is from immigration. You can see that from 2000 to today, there have been massive increases in immigration in the UK at levels that far exceed the citizen population. This has been happening for 20 years. You see a dip in 2020 during the lockdowns, and then immigration skyrockets last year. It's hard not to notice the connection between the increase in crime and the increase in immigration. 
the UK is bringing in people with a different culture and different values. The immigrant communities have a higher acceptance of violent crime and rape as a part of life. Local citizens in England are fed up with the rise in crime, and people are scared. Whose kids are going to be killed next? What parent needs to worry if they take their child to a yoga class if they will be hacked to death with a knife? This is video from the day after the knife attack. Protesters of local citizens had gathered. The police arrived to break up the protest, and the crowd is throwing bricks and debris at the police. Here's another protest. This is a woman pushing a trash can into the police. This woman was arrested and sentenced to 29 months in jail. Not all protests have been violent. Here is video of citizens peacefully marching in protest. Meanwhile, mobs of Muslim men have been moving through London. They're making sure that people know that Muslim men control the streets of London through the threat of force. Now, I know that not all immigrants are Muslim. I know that there are Muslims who are peaceful, and I have friends who are Muslims. Muslims should be speaking out about this problem, too, because it's hurting your religion. As you watch these videos, you will notice that there is a trend. I know this is not politically correct to say, but someone needs to be honest and say the obvious. There is a connection between Muslim immigrant men and the violence. You can see it in the videos. Here is one example from UK news coverage. This is a reporter talking about how white citizens are rioting, and she ignores the group of Muslim men walking next to her carrying machetes. Then there was this, as I say, clash between protesters and the police, and that is when they then ran off across the park here. Um, a big group ran off, um, looking for trouble, it looked like, to us. So we're just going to step away now from this group behind us, but um, a lot of disorder here. A lot Can we stop being politically correct and just report on what is actually happening in the video? UK, what is wrong with you? Here is more video of Muslim men rioting in the streets and burning the city. Here is another Muslim patrol walking through the streets. They are shouting, Allahu Akbar, which means God is greater, and is often the phrase Muslim men say before committing a violent crime they believe is justified under their religion. The mobs have been attacking Christian churches. Here is a destroyed statue of the Mother Mary outside a church. Here is a Muslim immigrant tearing down a cross at the entrance of a Baptist church. This is in broad daylight, and no police are doing anything about it. Part of the outrage from UK citizens has been fueled by what appears to be a two-tiered system of justice. Citizens who are protesting crime are getting arrested and given long prison sentences, and at the same time, immigrants are often ignored by the police. And if they are arrested, they're given light sentences. A 61-year-old retired train driver was arrested for attending a protest and shouting, Who the blank is Allah? I'm going to play you the video of the chant, and I apologize for the swearing, but you need to understand what he's being accused of. This 61-year-old man was sentenced to one and a half years in prison for saying those words. He wasn't violent, he didn't destroy anything, he was just speaking, and he's going to spend one and a half years in prison. Here is video of someone getting an even longer prison sentence for posting about the riots on Facebook. They received 20 months in prison for writing a Facebook post went on to say that you did not want your money going to immigrants who, quote, rape our kids and get priority, end quote. Oh. This offense is so serious that an immediate custodial sentence is unavoidable. Would you stand, please? The sentence that I pass has been reduced by one third to reflect your guilty plea. 
The sentence is one of 20 months imprisonment. Is this a joke? Because I feel like this could be a scene from Monty Python. Here is video of an elderly woman getting arrested at a protest. You just run into me. You're just over, I've got a pacemaker. I've got a pacemaker. I've got a pacemaker. I have, don't you miss, don't you, I have never been arrested in my life. I'm 73 years old. And I have come here because of them babies who's died. And I am being arrested. Now contrast this treatment with how the police treat Muslim immigrants. This is a 14-year-old boy who was hacked to death by a machete by two men. One of them was released after only six months in jail. This man committed murder and was released after six months. This was announced the same week that the three girls were killed in the knife attack. Here's another story. This is an 18-year-old Muslim man who raped a 13-year-old girl. He met the girl on Facebook, groomed her, brought her to a hotel, and had sex with her. Under English law, that should be a four to seven year prison sentence. The man argued in court that he didn't know it was rape because he went to an Islamic faith school where he was taught that women are worthless. He claimed women are no more worthy than a lollipop that has been dropped on the ground. That was his legal argument. He also said it was the girl's fault because she tempted him. He claims that the 13-year-old seduced him. The judge in the case gave the man no prison time. He was sentenced to nine months youth custody, suspended for two years, along with a two-year probation supervision order. Here is a video of a group of Muslim men kicking a police car. The police do nothing to them. It's crazy to me that these people are getting away with this and the police do nothing. And people wonder why there's an increase in crime. Here is video of a Muslim man shouting, we are ready to kill you all. We are ready to kill you all. Here's a photo of a Muslim man at one of the riots. He's carrying a sword. They're bringing swords to the riots, and the people who are writing Facebook posts are the ones going to jail. Am I the only person seeing something wrong here? In contrast, a 52-year-old woman was arrested because she bought eggs for rioters to throw at one of the protests. She didn't throw the eggs. She just went to the store and bought some eggs that were later used at the protest by someone else. So you're telling me that this old woman is going to jail and nothing is happening to the guy with the sword. We're living in a clown world. Just so you understand what is happening to the citizens protesting against immigration. They're being sent to prison. Inside the prison, they face the threat of being beat up. Here is video that was snuck out of one of the prisons. Now, I can't confirm what this video shows, but it appears to be one of the rioters who was severely slashed and beaten up in prison. You can see pools of blood on the floor. I can understand why the protesters are upset. It makes me mad and I'm not even British. To make matters worse, the current Prime Minister, Keir Starmer, gave this speech saying that he was going to go after any citizens that were rioting against the immigrants. I guarantee you will regret taking part in this disorder, whether directly or those whipping up this action online and then running away themselves. We've seen Muslim communities targeted, attacks on mosques, other minority communities singled out, Nazi salutes in the street, attacks on the police, wanton violence alongside racist rhetoric. So no, I won't shy away from calling it what it is, far-right thuggery. I would like to ask Keir Starmer, what about the man who hacked up the teenager with a machete that was just let out of prison? Why aren't you going after him? 
What about the man who raped a 13-year-old girl? Why aren't you going after him? Why are you only going after the citizens who are concerned about losing their country? The attacks on religion are also increasing, not on Muslims, but on all other religions for some reason. Here's a group of Muslim men threatening Jews. What they are shouting loosely translates to, Jews, remember Kabar the army of Muhammad is coming to kill you too. Here is video of the police arresting an elderly man for preaching the Bible on the street. This is hard to watch. What's so hard to watch about this is this is an old man. Why are the police so threatened by this old person? In fact, a lot of the people who are being arrested are from the older generation. The police are arresting grandmas. What is the threat that these old people are creating? These are the same people that I would offer to take their groceries out for them because they might need some help. Let me give some advice to the police. Don't mess with the older generation. In most cases, they're smarter than you. They have lived long enough to know what the world should look like. And I'll be blunt, in most cases, they know better. In fact, all this craziness would not be happening if we just listened to the older generation. The police continues to ramp up efforts to prosecute people. Here is the London police chief saying they're going to go after people for their online posts. Talk to me about that because we have seen some high profile figures whipping up the hatred. You talked about it in there with the officers, in fact, about this being added to by online commentary. I mean, I'm even thinking of the likes of Elon Musk getting involved. What are you considering when it comes to dealing with people who are whipping up this kind of behavior from behind a keyboard and maybe in a different country? Being a keyboard warrior does not make you safe from the law. You can be guilty of offences of, of incitement, of stirring up racial hatred. There are numerous terrorist offences regarding um, uh, uh, the sort of publishing of material. All of those offences are in play if people are provoking hatred and violence on the streets. And we'll come after those individuals just as we will physically confront on the streets the thugs and the obs who are, taking, who are causing the problems for communities. So he is threatening Americans that if we post something that violates British hate speech laws, he will extradite us to the UK and throw us in jail. I have news for your police chief. There's a little document that protects me called the Declaration of Independence. Americans stopped the British from throwing us in prison in 1776. So if the British want to come after me, go ahead and try it. Part of the real issue here is that the British gave up their right to bear arms. The UK has some of the strictest firearm laws in the world. In 1996, there was a terrible school shooting in the UK. The government used the tragedy to pass sweeping gun laws. Most handguns have been banned in Great Britain since then. All these laws clearly didn't help to reduce violent crime. All it did was allow the government to arrest their citizens for Facebook posts. There's no way for anyone to push back because the government is the only ones with the guns. Here is the progression we have seen. School shooting, government takes everyone's guns, government arrests you for Facebook posts. This is the same thing we have seen in Canada. In 2022, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced a freeze on all sales of handguns nationwide. Then just this year, Justin Trudeau endorsed a new law that would jail people potentially for the rest of their lives for posting things on Facebook that the government determines to be hate speech. This progression happened in only two years. This is why the right to bear arms is so important in America, and I hope that Americans never give it up. To emphasize my point, let me show you what's happening in England. 
This is what happens when the police show up at your door for writing a Facebook post they don't like. I'm about to lose my mind. This is unacceptable for a Facebook post. People are going to prison over Facebook posts. I'm gonna be brutally honest with you. Do you British people want to know what your problem is? You are too polite. I know that being polite is part of the British culture, and you probably think that Americans are a little rough around the edges. But take some advice from an American. There is such a thing as being too polite. Let me show you a video. This is your prince and princess visiting a Muslim majority area in England. The princess was very accommodating and wore a hijab over her head. When they walk inside, the man refuses to shake the hand of the princess because she is a woman. This is an example of the British being too polite. He won't shake the hand of the princess? These are people you have welcomed into your country. They hack up people with machetes. They rape your children. Sometimes the polite thing is to be brutally honest with someone and tell them no. You tell them that if they want to be a part of your country, they will not treat your women as second-class citizens. They will respect other religions. And anyone who refuses to integrate is going to be sent back home. What you do not do is let them walk all over you and then act surprised when your country is in chaos. Part of the problem is that in the UK, I would be thrown in prison for what I just said. It is considered anti-immigrant hate speech to stand up for yourself. The UK does not have freedom of speech like the US. They follow the European Convention on Human Rights, which includes a guarantee of freedom of expression, whatever that means. Apparently, it doesn't mean very much since they're throwing people in jail for Facebook posts. But I believe there's a reason for hope. I've read a lot about British history. And if you look at the entire history of the UK, there is one theme that stands out. The British people are smart. I don't know if it's in their genes, I don't know what it is, but they are some of the smartest people in the world. And British people are starting to wake up. There are some people in the UK who do understand the problem. Here's a conversation with a random lady on the street. That we need a Trump for this country because it's got out of hand. A Trump for this country? Mr. Trump, somebody like that. Here's a woman in a red hat that says, make England great again. Here is someone who really describes the problem perfectly. Nobody has the right to live their lives being protected from offense or from insult or from hurt feelings. It is an occupational hazard of living in society. And if you really can't take it, become a hermit. Now, I don't know that much about British politics, so I don't know who this is, but she is absolutely right. The government should not throw people in jail over whatever they determine to be hate speech. Why aren't more people listening to this woman? I think she's amazing. Americans can't get too self-righteous about freedom of speech because we have our own problems with massive online censorship. You may have seen my post from this week, but YouTube just removed my video from two weeks ago about Kamala Harris. This video is now completely banned from YouTube. Now, if you wanna see the video, it's still up on Rumble and Twitter, but isn't it odd that YouTube decided to take down that one specific video? What's so terrible about me exposing the past of Kamala Harris 90 days before the presidential election? This is just one example of how the US is facing our own free speech challenges. If you're watching this from America, Here's why all of this is important. What's happening in England is coming to America next. America's facing the same issues with immigration.
Illegal immigrants are flowing over the border, and violent crime is increasing. These are the policies that Kamala Harris wants to continue, and it will destroy our country. What I've been showing you in England is exactly what's going to happen here. Now, I bet all these people in England wish they had said something before things got so bad. Now, you might ask yourself, why would these politicians completely sabotage their own country? That's pretty evil. I believe this is all coming from a small group of people who are currently in power. If all you care about is maintaining your own power, you are willing to burn your own nation to the ground so that you can rule over the ashes. That's what's happening. They don't care if you get raped or murdered. If they can kill off enough of the middle class and the business owners, then they can rule over what's left with an iron fist. If they can import millions of new votes, all those people will vote so our current leaders can stay in power forever. A lot of court cases are being ruled on right now whether they will enforce laws keeping illegal immigrants from voting. If those laws are simply not enforced, illegal immigrants can swing an election. If the Democrats are elected again, they will continue their policies on the border, and what is happening in England will happen in America next. This is the last chance to save the United States. You do not want what happened to those three little girls in England to happen to your children. Now I want to hear from you. Do you think I should go visit the UK? And if I do, will Keir Starmer throw me in prison? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. Like I mentioned earlier, I've been having a lot of trouble with YouTube. My video about Kamala Harris was deleted. A few weeks ago, I made a video about the attempt on Donald Trump's life. That video was demonetized. I think these are important videos that people need to know about. But this has been my worst month financially in over a year. If you find my videos helpful, consider signing up for a monthly membership on my free speech website, wolvesandfinance.com. For $6 a month, your support helps me to survive when my videos get banned and demonetized. And I think it's also important that we create these online spaces for free speech where you're not going to get censored or banned for political speech. I want to give a big thank you to my members because you're really helping me out during this time. I'm Zach from Wolves and Finance. Thank you for watching.